I've previously talked about how Batman the Animated Series shone the spotlight on then relatively unknown villains like Man Bat, Killer Croc and Ra's al Ghul. But there's one obscure villain that only appeared in a single episode of BTAS that I want to talk about today. Let's talk about Hugo Strange. Delving into Strange's comic book origins, Professor Hugo Strange was actually one of Batman's first recurring villains, making his debut in February 1940's Detective Comics 36. Now that is less than a year after Batman's first appearance and before the Joker, Catwoman and Robin. Strange is presented to us as a criminal mastermind who uses his scientific genius to commit dastardly crimes. In his first appearance he uses a machine that can generate dense fog to aid his henchmen in evading the police when robbing banks. In later stories Strange would develop a serum that would turn a regular human being into a towering monster man who followed his every command. He would go on to create a gun that sprayed a fear inducing chemical way before the scarecrow even had the idea. That's not the only connection to the Scarecrow by the way, Scarecrow's redesigned look from the new Batman adventures took a lot of inspiration from Strange's Monster Men. Strange is presented to us as a criminal, scientific genius and a philosopher, although we don't really hear much about his philosophy and his appearances. He was a formidable foe for Batman, even if Batman could beat him in a fistfight relatively easily. In Detective Comics 46, Strange was presumed dead after he toppled over a cliff's edge whilst battling Batman. It wouldn't be until 1977's Detective Comics 471, some 37 years later, that Hugo Strange would return. Apparently Strange had faked his death and fled to Europe where he continued his criminal campaign until he grew bored and sought a challenge that only Batman could offer. During the storyline Strange learned the Batman's true identity and planned to auction it off to the Penguin, the Joker and corrupt politician Rupert Thorne. However Strange was abducted by Thorne and beaten to death in an attempt to extract Batman's secret identity from him. Strange would refuse to share the information and vowed to protect the secret until his dying breath which was about two minutes later. Thorne would go on to be driven mad, haunted by Hugo Strange's ghost to the point that he confessed his involvement in Strange's murder and was sent to Arkham. Years later Thorne would resurface claiming to be sane but he was still haunted by visions of Hugo Strange. It would later be revealed that someone had been tormenting Thorne with holograms of Strange's ghost and hallucinatory chemicals in an attempt to oust him from his position of political power. It later transpired that it was Strange himself that had been seeking revenge on Thorne and with him out of the picture Strange felt it was safe to return to his original plan of taking over Bruce Wayne's life and assuming the role of Batman. How did Strange survive the beating from Thorne's henchmen? Well, apparently Strange possessed remarkable control over his body and slowed his heart to a near stop, creating the illusion that he had died. When his body was stuffed into a cask and thrown into the Gotham River, Strange simply waited a few moments, popped out and then swam to freedom. After failing to kill Batman, Robin and Alfred, Strange would seemingly meet his end by blowing himself up. But you could never be too sure when it came to Hugo Strange. Following the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths, in which the DC timeline was reset, Strange was reimagined as a prominent psychologist that took a special interest in vigilantes. In September 1990's Legends of the Dark Knight 11, in a story called Prey, Hugo Strange is revealed to be a deeply disturbed man that dreams of assuming the mantle of Batman even though he doesn't quite have the necessary physical attributes. But he does have a devious criminal mind. When a task force is put together to bring in the Batman, Strange manages to worm his way onto the task force, acting as a consultant with the aim of working out who Batman is and sets up a scheme to frame Batman. Strange also developed a disturbing sexual infatuation with the mayor's daughter and frames Batman for her kidnapping, while he keeps her locked up in his apartment. All in all this version of Strange is downright creepy and seemingly meets his end after trying to evade capture, only to be filled with lead and plunge into the sea. I can't say with any certainty that this story influenced the BTAS version of Hugo Strange because it came out during the early development stages of the show, but I can say with 100% certainty that the 1970s version of the character was the main inspiration. Those that are familiar with the episode The Strange Secret of Bruce Wayne will immediately recognise the scene in which Strange attempts to auction off Batman's secret identity. This idea was lifted straight from the comics but the execution was wildly different. Similarly, Strange's characterisation is quite different from his appearances in the comics. Betas is strange as a short, dumpy man with a distinctively shaped skull. He's clearly something of an inventor because he creates a machine that can be used to record people's memories. He acts as the lead clinician at Roland Daggett's Yucca Springs Resort, which is promoted towards Gotham's wealthy elite as an ideal way of reducing stress. Strange uses the machine to gather his patient's darkest secrets, presumably for Daggett to exploit. After attempting to blackmail a prominent judge, Batman books a stay at the resort and tries to get to the bottom of the scheme. And let's not beat about the bush here. While the script itself is fine, and I really like the scene where Hugo Strange gets the Joker's answer machine message. <laughs> Boy, did you get a wrong number. Leave your message at the sound of the shriek. No, please, don't! Ah! 
The animation from ACOM is some of the series' worst. Not only are characters off model, but the proportions are all over the place, and the movement is slow and plodding. Just look at this close up of Two Face, and let's compare that to the work of TMS on Two Face Part 1 or Dong Yang on Second Chance. It's like completely different shows. While I quite enjoyed seeing the Joker, Penguin and Two-Face gathering in one place to bid on Batman's identity, I find it enjoyable to see the villains interacting, it makes the world feel more connected. Producer Bruce Timm has spoken out against the episode, saying, I have a problem with the villain team-ups. I think it diminishes them. When you put Penguin, Joker and Two-Face all in one scene, suddenly they're all about one-third as interesting as they would be by themselves. And unfortunately, this show proves my point. Agree to disagree, Bruce? This is the only appearance that Hugo Strange makes in BTAS, although he later made a silent cameo in Justice League Unlimited. He also appeared in half a dozen issues of Batman the Animated Series tie-in comics, Batman Adventures and Batman the Adventures Continue. His first story from 1995's Batman Adventures 34 through 36 involves Strange once again meddling with memories, although this time he creates a device that can be used to remove painful memories and store them within diamonds. The twist here is that Batman gets caught in the device's beam and his memories of his parents' murder disappear, essentially reverting him back to the mindset of an eight-year-old boy. Strange suffers from having the one memory he wanted to remove, the murder of his son at the hands of Rupert Thorne's henchman, stuck, playing in a loop in his mind, driving him mad as he seeks to revenge his son by killing Rupert Thorne. Although the premise is a little out there, I really enjoyed this story as it gave us a glimpse of what Batman was like before his parents were murdered, and the moment in which his painful memories were restored was quite difficult to read. Strange reappeared in 2023's Batman Adventures Continue 3 through 5, which detailed the origins of the Joker's new sidekick, Straight Man. He's revealed to be the subject of a super soldier program overseen by Hugo Strange, who created a device to take control of people's minds in order to make obedient soldiers. Guess what happens when the Joker gets his hands on this device? I like the way that Paul Dini and Alan Burnett write Hugo Strange. He's a neat amalgamation of all the previous versions of Hugo Strange, a mad scientist who also happens to be a psychiatrist, with none of the weird pervy stuff from the 90s. Outside of this, that's it for Hugo Strange, and in a way, it's kind of appropriate for him to only make a handful of appearances, given that he wasn't in the comics very often. But at the same time, I think there's a lot more that could have been done with the character. It's a shame that we didn't get to see him in a more prominent role in Justice League Unlimited's Cadmus arc. Although since then, the character has featured prominently in TV shows like The Batman, voiced by the late great Frank Gorshin, and Gotham, as well as being one of the main antagonists in the excellent Batman Arkham City video game. Considering that Hugo Strange was one of Batman's first foes, it would have been great to see more of him in BTAS, but fortunately, other shows have made good use of him.